everyone, so happy you are here for our half hour journey through the pages of Jamaica Magazine. Welcome on board this informative trip. I'm Theodore Henry. First up, we'll find out what's new on COVID Avenue, plus features you can use to guide on growing some of what you eat. Stay with us. If you've been in contact with a person confirmed with or suspected of having COVID-19 and is now feeling sick or displaying symptoms of coughing, sneezing, runny nose, sore throat, fever or difficulty breathing, here is what you need to do. Self-isolate, stay at home and call or ask someone to contact the Ministry of Health and Wellness through one of its COVID-19 helplines. Follow the Health Ministry's instructions. Numbers to call are 888-754-7792 or 888-1LOVE, that is 888-663-5683. Additional numbers to call are 876-542-5998, 876-542-6007 and 876-542-6006. If you are sick, don't create the chance for infection spread by going out in public spaces, using public transport or just turning up at the doctor or hospital. Do your part to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Up next, we look at the continuing collaboration between government and its private sector partners who are joining forces to ensure Jamaica has the tools to fight COVID-19. Health workers on the front line in the battle against COVID-19 are providing a valiant service. One of their most critical tasks is contact tracing. This involves going into communities to find persons who may have come in contact with individuals that have tested positive for COVID-19. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says this has been effective in helping to contain the coronavirus outbreak in Jamaica. I am convinced now more than ever that the most effective weapon that we could employ to dealing with COVID is found in you here and the rest like you throughout Jamaica who have to go out in the hot sun, in the rain, go to people's yards, deal with the dog if the dog are back, deal with people who may be resistant, take the risk, the public health risk, the personal risk, to do the temperature checks, to do the interviews, and, let, and, and I, am, I am fully convinced that your work is what has really contributed to the number of cases being contained in the country. Your work is absolutely vital. The St. Mary Parish Health Department has been conducting contact tracing in the communities of Anotta Bay, Dover and Enfield, which have been placed under quarantine with effect from 6 a.m. Thursday, May 7 to 6 a.m. Thursday, May 21. The health minister is urging residents in the affected areas to reach out to the contact tracers with specific requests, such as medication for the elderly, or call or message him at 876-381-3784. The Ministry of Labour and Social Security is also working in the communities to satisfy residents' basic needs. The spirit of goodwill and courage in the fight against COVID-19 continues to spread with an increase in corporate support. Unicama Quartz Jamaica Limited is the latest company to lend its support with a donation of 20 state-of-the-art hospital beds to the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The beds, valued at $3.5 million, were handed over on May 8 at the Unicoma Distribution Center in Kingston. These uh, uh, medical uh, beds are going to be quite useful. In Jamaica today, we have about 4,000 beds across our hospital network, just about a little over that. Um, with COVID, we have seen and we expect a lot more hospitalization and as a consequence, additional capacity, because outside of COVID, there are so many other things that we have to do, and so many other persons in different areas who require hospital care. When you compare to what, what else has happened across the world in so many countries, what we have in, in Jamaica is phenomenal in terms of how we've been tackling this. We will continue to push and to support um, what's necessary to ensure that, that this thing COVID gets out of Jamaica as quick, you know, as quickly as, as possible. 
In a move to ease the economic burden brought on by COVID-19, the National Water Commission NWC has granted a 30% discount to residential customers with outstanding balances more than 90 days in arrears. The NWC is offering a waiver totaling approximately $50 million in reconnection fees for customers whose service was disconnected prior to the announcement of the first confirmed case of COVID-19 in Jamaica. These represent a total rebate of about $1.5 billion. The initiative, dubbed the biggest wave, will see the discount reflected in the utility bills of some NWC customers for the period May 6 to July 31, 2020. An estimated 31,000 customers are being targeted under the initiative. We recognize that with the financial constraint, we have a category of customers, uh, approximately 19,000 thereabout, who would normally make payment to the NWC but would not necessarily make payment uh, in full all the time. And so we understand that there would be even more challenges to those customers. Uh, in, during this time when persons are being laid off or are losing, uh, losing their job. To promote social distancing, persons are directed to use the NWC's iPay payment portal on the company's website, nwc.com, or to pay their bills at external payment agencies. Persons are also encouraged to utilize the NWC drop box at parish offices. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is reassuring the international business community that as the country works toward a post-COVID-19 era, it is proceeding with caution to reopen sectors of the economy. The Prime Minister says getting the economy to return as close as possible to full capacity is realistic, but the process will ensure the health and safety of individuals. I have two priorities. Priority number one is their health and safety, and priority number one is their livelihoods. So I don't see a trade-off between health and economy. I don't see the two things as mutually exclusive. You need healthy people to make the economy work, and a working economy gives you healthy people. Prime Minister Holness was speaking with the CNN business editor-at-large, Richard Quest, on May 14. Mr. Holness says the tourism sector is critical to Jamaica's economy recovery, as it accounts for more than 50% of the country's foreign exchange earnings. As a result, he says plans are being put in place to accommodate a phased reopening of the sector. We have to plan in advance and anticipate when our largest uh, tourism market would be ready for us. Uh, what we would want is for the United States to be ready, Canada to be ready, Europe to be ready, and we are not. So we are preparing. You know, the, the tourism industry is very susceptible to global shocks. And this would not be the first global shock that our tourism industry would have. And indeed, uh, within the Caribbean countries, we are already okay. um, very much aware and sensitive towards these global shocks. So we are resilient. So Part of being resilient is so to plan for it. So what we're doing now is to ensure that we have the protocols. And as you have said, we are already figuring out ways how we can have um, controlled corridors of, of entry, uh, how to move our tourists safely from airports to hotels uh, so that they can enjoy our lovely beaches and our lovely people. Prime Minister Holness also responded to the possibility of Jamaica adopting the requirement of a COVID-19 medical certificate by visitors to the island. I think it's the information that is important. Uh, one, you want to have at least some health profile understanding of the visitor that is coming and that process itself helps the visitor to be aware of the protocols that they would have to follow uh, and then we would begin to be able to see whether or not 
you know, determine the risk profile of the visitor who is coming and the measures that would have to be in place on the Jamaica end to ensure that we can cater to any needs that those risk profiles would throw up. Prime Minister, thank you. I look forward to you and I continuing the discussion, preferably and hopefully on one of Jamaica's beautiful beaches. Thank you, Prime Minister. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Let me know when you're coming. One impact of the coronavirus pandemic has been the sudden and extended change of children's routines, particularly schooling. That and the social distancing measures we are all practicing, it can have an impact on their psyches. So it becomes important for parents to provide the comfort, guidance, and protection they need during this period. Our next feature helps you communicate with children about the realities of COVID-19 while giving them reassurance. Wash your hands frequently and maintain a three to six feet distance from persons. Families across the country are adapting to the evolving changes in daily life caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Most schools, places of public gathering and non-essential businesses are closed and parents and other caregivers are faced with helping families adjust to the new normal. This includes trying to keep children adequately informed during the outbreak. If you want to know how you can ensure that your children are equipped with the right amount of information they need about COVID-19, follow these next steps. The first thing you have to do is make time to talk to them. Talk to your children daily about the latest news and updates, and be sure to let them know that they can come to you if and when they have questions. When talking to children, ensure that you use words and sentences that are most suitable for their age group. This is the only way to ensure that the child receives and understands the information being shared. Let your children develop the habit of watching the news with you, but ensure that the information is credible and that information overload does not occur because this can lead to anxiety. The outbreak of the coronavirus has brought with it numerous reports of racial discrimination around the world and general misinformation. So, it's important to check that your children are neither experiencing nor contributing to bullying. Make time to clarify all rumors and discriminatory claims. Explain to children how they can stay safe during the period. Talk to them about the importance of a balanced diet, social distancing, hand washing, sanitization, and other important safety measures. Children may inevitably become worried about all the changes happening around them due to COVID-19, but it is your duty as parents to assure them that steps are being taken every day to keep them safe. Impress upon them that, rather than be worried, they should be prepared. To properly carry out a hand rub, apply a palmful of the product in your cupped hand, covering all surfaces. Rub your hands palm to palm. Rub your right palm over the back of your left hand with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Rub your hands palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Rub the back of your fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Rotationally rub backwards and forwards the clasped fingers of your right hand in your left palm and vice versa. Once your hands are dry, they are now safe.
We're shifting gears a bit to plant some knowledge on the use of technology to water the fruits of our labor. Watch this. <laughs> Here we have a structured agricultural program. Um, students sit the subject at CSEC and at the CAPE level. It is divided into two groups, the animal and the crop production. So here at Beer, the students, they, they, they tried to use technology. So they came up with the robot, we call it an RIV, which is a remote irrigation vehicle. So instead of coming on the farm to do the watering, the fertilizing and the spraying, the technology itself, which is the RIV, does that job for the students. It eliminates them being here on a very frequent basis to get that done. Yeah, I started this group when I was in grade nine, when we first entered the 4 H Tech Agriculture Competition. We first designed a miniature chicken coop that was poured via wind turbines. Our project we have now is our RIV, which is a three phase project. We now are at phase two. Phase one was our atmospheric water generator which generated water for our greenhouse. Phase two is our robot that catches the water from the generator and distributes it to the plants within the greenhouse. SRC competition, which is a scientific research country competition, we won that competition three years in a row. 2019 was actually a relief because we won 2018 with phase one of the project. So we actually won 2019 with phase two of the, phase two of the project. What we want to do with the robot now is to allow the robot to specify how much humidity is within the soil and tell what type of pest is on the plant. The RIV consists of um, three sections, the watering and the electronics and the movement. All right. For certain vehicles, it's hard to maneuver through certain obstacles. So we designed the robot to work on a very rugged terrain. So um, it has six wheels. The watering is set in a way where it won't damage plants during the watering. So we take specific measurements regarding the gap that's, that, that it's working with. And then our electronics is powered by a solar panel that we place on the back of the robot, which does the charging for the batteries. So while it's working, you don't have to worry about it running, to, running out of power during the process. So as it, go, as it does its job, it charges and you get a steady feedback on your cell phone regarding what it's doing, how far it has reached in the water and our fertilizing. The most unique factor is that you can leave it in your farm anywhere and you can stay at work, in your house, anywhere and get live feedback regarding the statistics of the robot, battery percentage, location how far it has reached um, in the process of water and our fertilizing. We're trying to engulf the younger generation into the association because we don't want that when we move on, the club and the legacy that we have created die out. So we incorporate the younger ones and so forth, teach them what we have already garnered, especially the experiences from what we have, we take some of the younger ones with us so that they can gain, get the experience as well and help their fellow young mates up. If you're interested in science and technology, it is, a, it is a field that you have to have patience because everything won't go the way that you want it to. So you have to develop patience, you have to be a good listener, you have to learn to observe because through these skills you'll be able to advance your skills because no one knows everything, so each one teach one. So when you have these skills now, you'll be able to learn faster, you'll be able to learn better, and in the long run, you'll be able to develop your own ideas based on what you've learned along the way. Solid waste management is a critical component of curtailing local transmission of COVID-19. As householders strive to keep their homes and frequently used services clean, domestic garbage collection is now even more important. 
The National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, has called on citizens to partner with the agency in taking all measures possible to contain the spread of this virus. The recommended actions to support the sanitation crews are securing household garbage by properly bagging, tying and placing in a container for collection, double bagging garbage containing tissue, gloves, face masks and diapers, placing storage receptacles at the front of the premises where they can be accessed without hindrance 24 hours per day. Persons with uncollected garbage are also encouraged to contact the agency through the following media. Call toll free at 888 Clean JA, that's 888-253-2652, or WhatsApp 876-448-3220, or email nswma at nswma.gov.jm. Visit the agency's website, www.nswma.gov.jm, and reach out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. The NSWMA continues to work closely with the Ministries of Local Government and Health to ensure the welfare of employees and the citizens of Jamaica. Using your household waste to make compost soil material is a great way to turn your waste into value. Not only does this reduce what we send to the landfills, but we can earn from healthy crops grown in the soils enriched by the compost we make. Take a look at what your kitchen scraps can produce. Compost is one of the richest form of soil nutrient. So here we are buying fertilizer for huge sums of money, when in fact, we are throwing away something which is richer in many regards than what we are buying, spending hard cash for. We, uh, from time to time, do what we call garbage characterization survey. This is where we actually go island-wide and take samples of the garbage and look at what make up the garbage. All the surveys that are done in recent past points to one particular set of dynamic. The compostables are always the highest. 67% in some survey, 65% in some. We eat vegetables. We do ground provisions, the peelings from those. We use cardboards, newspapers, lots of stuff that can be broken down and can be put to good use. With such a high percentage of the solid waste being compostable, we are therefore forced to look at how we're gonna manage in the best way possible, in the most efficient way possible, that high percentage of the garbage. Composting is a rich form of soil that is broken down by microorganisms to become um, either fertilizer or soil. Um, now we're going to do a demonstration to show you how we can do it. First, if we're starting, this is our kitchen waste. So if you're starting a compost bin at home, you need to get your kitchen peel, your banana, your lettuce, your cabbage, your tomatoes, and you cut them in finer particles, it will make it break down much faster. In order for the, the, the microorganism to work effectively, you need moisture, you need hair, and you need heat. You can use a hand shovel or your hands. Too much moisture will allow the stuff to rot and it won't decompose. And if it is too dry, the microorganisms won't be able to work effectively. So you need to get a right mixture. If you squeeze it to the face, you shouldn't have any water running out of it. If it's dripping, it is okay. If it is running out of it, that means you, had, you have too much water. So now this is our compost. If you keep this moisture in your compost, it will give you a maturity rate of three and a half months. And you'll get this final product, which 
is this right here. Compost, what it does, the longer it stays into the ground, is the richer it becomes. We're going to demonstrate how we um, use our compost for potting. Um, We're going to pot a few plants using our compost. This plant is called spider fern. It is an indoor plant that does like a fair amount of water. It likes um, a light mixture. The composting can be used for indoor and outdoor plants. This plant is called a bougainvillea. It is an outdoor plant. It likes a lot of sunlight. Um, it blooms a lot and it, it likes dry areas. The compost it, it offers drainage. Um, it doesn't keep the water too long. This is now six weeks old and this is three weeks after being planted as a seedling using our compost. And this Bougainvillea is six weeks after being planted by our compost and they're just blooming, blooming, blooming. This is a mature, mature spider fern that we use for our rentals and this is about two and a half months old. The other benefit is that we at the NSWA, we, we would need less trucks. Now, right now, our biggest problem is trucks to remove garbage. Can you imagine if we could take out the 67% which we could convert at source? What that would do to our national budget? Gas oil, repairs of trucks, labor for, for, to work on the trucks. Just look at it. It is huge savings that could come. Exponential is about getting a behavioral change at source that will see significant reduction in solid waste. We want to see this reduction and so see it in a very tangible way. And we believe that composting provides that excellent opportunity. This is where we end our half hour journey, but be sure to join us again tomorrow for another informative edition of Jamaica Magazine. Until then, continue to watch these and other programs by logging on to our website, jis.gov.jm, or subscribing to our YouTube channel. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Theodore Henry, urging you to take care and practice proper hygiene and social distancing as we strive to prevent the spread of COVID-19. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.